Everyone is listening to this broadcast and all the Global Revival Church members. God's special grace and spirit of revelation, I pray that it's opened up to you guys, especially today. The word that I want to share with you guys is in the end times, the set, there's a set of anointings that he pours out to you, and how can you communicate with God, and how does God want to lead us in our lives, in these areas, the revelation open up in these areas, and that we can be together with God, and in our life, in these areas, you know, there's many revelations in the area so that you can have relationship and communication with God and you can understand more deeper His word. And I hope your life can be like that. So I bless you guys so that you, with you and God, there will be a new communication channel will be completed. And with God's help and His Spirit's help, you know, you can have more spiritual growth and more confidence in your life. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Times, what God pours out to us, we probably already anticipated it, but in Joel 2, verse 28, if you read it, it says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also on my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. 많은 이적을 이 땅에 베풀게 될 거다라고 기록되어 있어요. That in Joel 2, 28, 29, so the areas that God is talking about, there's a lot of areas that he's talking about in these areas. In this verse, the sons and daughters. 그 다음에 또. And then who else? It says all flesh, all the nations, all people, there's no, like, um, exception. Gentile Jews, people who do not believe God will still work in all of them. So it's an amazing, like, miraculous message to us. So then you're, so those, the ministers who are called to God, you know, there's those old men as well. So, two, it's good to pass. But if you look carefully in Acts chapter 2, you can look carefully in Acts chapter 2, you can look carefully in Acts chapter 2, talk to us. So in, if we read from verse 16 to 18, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams, and on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Okay. Acts 2, in the, in the beginning, there's the Pentecost, the anointing that is poured out. Do you think it fully completed um, Joel 2 or only completed a certain part? That was fulfilled. So the first thing it says, all flesh to all the nations, all flesh, but it's not all of them. It was only to the Jewish 120 people, only to the dead that worked at the Pentecost poured out. But it didn't happen to the other people, so it all flesh includes everyone. But it says sons and daughters, so it's talking about the young children. But in the Pentecost, there was no young children. They were all at least adults. So, because they're all older than adults, they're all ministers, they're all adults, there was no young children there. So then in the last days, it says all the young children will do it as well, so it's not completely fulfilled yet. So that means there's still something remaining that hasn't been fulfilled yet. So when we see these things, so vision and dream and prophecy are written in the Bible, and prophecy and then signs, wonders, and miracles. But at the Pentecost, what appeared? Did the vision, dream, and prophecy appear during the Pentecost or something else? Something else appeared. What was it? The Holy Spirit did come. He did pour out His Holy Spirit, but what else came? Tongues came, speaking tongues. They were able to speak tongues. But if you look at the bigger picture, they started off from the speaking tongues and then everything opens up after that. But the promised word as face value didn't completely be fulfilled yet during the Pentecost. That means there's still something remaining. So if we go back to Joel chapter 2, in verse 23, 
뭐라고 되어 있나? 자, 읽어볼까요? Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for He has given you the former rain faithfully, and He will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Okay. 이른 비와 늦은 비에 두 번의 일이 벌어질 거라는 것이죠. So the 2000 years ago, the Pentecost was the former rain. The latter rain is when there's another that happens again. And before the end time happens, these things are going to be released to us. That's why a lot of ministers keep saying that they're talking about the mega Pentecost. Because as it is recorded, there's going to be something greater. Greater things will happen. Us. We'll be able to experience greater things. So when those things happen to us, in the end times, what he wants to give us, the greater anointing, what is the signs that will appear? The signs that will appear to all people. Prophecy. See? Visions and dreams. So, in dreams among them, what is the most important thing? God, everything is important. Everything is important, but there are some things that we have to think about. Through this, when God speaks, I mean, He reveals something. When Jesus was born on earth, what, how did God tell His father Joseph? Vision or prophecy. But how did God speak to His father Joseph when Jesus was going to be born? He talked to him through a dream. So it says the old man will dream. It means it can talk about maturity, but it can also talk about how you interpret the complicated things. But in the end time, anointing, the vision, dream, prophecy, among them, the thing that is emphasized the most is dreams. So if we go to Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 1 from verse 18 to 21, Verse 18 to 21. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. Please behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call him Je his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Okay, he didn't. Angel of the Lord, of the Lord appeared to him in the dream. So, so in the dream, the angel of the Lord appeared and told him, talk to him. So it wasn't just a dream, but it was a very powerful dream. The angel of the Lord, an angel appeared and said, your mother, uh, your wife Mary is conceived of the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus. He even told him the name. So it was a powerful message, which was a dream. When we were praying for Israel, we experienced that we had more dreams this time around. There was a lot of dreams that were being poured out to us. Do you know about do you know? It's saying that in the end times, as we're going to the end times, especially Israel, based on God's time schedule, Israel's restoration and the Jews being restored for Gentiles was meant. So when we make our focus on the what God wants, then all of His power and revelation will lead us. We start to be aligned with His word. In the, you know, dreams that we never imagined, He will it'll show us the clear direction we have to go in our life. And Joseph, even you know, this is not usual in the in back then how they got married and the baby was born. So, you know, and if this happened back then, it would have been, if it was known to the public, they would be stoned, their life would be over. But then they went over it quietly and then they made it so that it wouldn't become like a public example and she did it secretly. But God clearly spoke to them so then they were able to clean up in this area and then Joseph in this area didn't complain. And just obeyed and showed an incredible response to this. In this mission trip, us too, we heard a lot of dreams and we shared a lot of dreams. Of course, we didn't let all the dreams be known. 
because there's some people who cannot understand and they might they might get tempted because they hear it. So we didn't share everything, but just the core intercession team, you know, remained and that we fought, we, you know, prepared, we prayed, and that at the right time, there's a right direction God worked, we could experience it on this mission trip. So if we go to Matthew chapter 2, verse 13, okay, we worked again through a dream, so now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring your word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. So even to the wise men, who said, God told them not to go to, go to a different path, to avoid Herod, and even to Joseph, he appeared in a dream, saying, They're trying to kill your son, so you know, run away to Egypt. So God, even what did they receive through the wise men? They received gold, frankincense, and myrrh. At this time, it's a very uh, uh, like big gift. So how did they live in Egypt? Lived from the things they received, the gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and there was no problem with that. So God prepared, so even though it was part of symbolic, there was a different meaning, but God worked so that everything comes together. God leads the, our life, and a key point the message he gives us is through dreams. Through the dreams, he got the revelation saying from the angel of the Lord. It wasn't just the revelation, revelation of a dream, it was from the angel of the Lord. So when we start to discern our dreams, you will know that not all dreams are from God. Some are just, you know, there's a no, no, no meaning. If you're like into something, you probably will dream about that. So those are not from God. So if you really want, you'll probably have those kind of dreams. So like, just like this, an angel of the Lord, don't you want to have dreams with the angel of the Lord? And then you know, the angel of the Lord appears and then directly tells you something in the dream. So that dream is itself will probably give you a lot of anointing, so the revelation area will open, there will be a new channel that's open. Many people say that they don't, there are some people that say they don't dream that much. Because their thoughts are molded in a certain way. When, if you release them into God's way and you align it, then there will be a lot of revelations that will come through your dreams. When you see Paul Cox's ministry, he talks a lot about dreams. Whenever there's a new level, there's some kind of dream. Whenever there's a new direction, or every time there's a new spiritual revelation, a lot of it comes through dreams. When you heal people, it also, there's also, it also comes through dreams, and there's a lot of healing that happens. So let's go to Matthew chapter 2, verse 19 to 21. Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he arose, took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. Okay. Same message. Since the angel of the Lord appeared, to Joseph, Joseph is very interesting. He isn't recorded that much in the Bible. Behind and there's not that much behind story about him, but the interesting thing is that all the dreams that he had was from the angel of the Lord appeared. And then, you know, they appeared and they talked to Joseph in his dreams. So all of the end times, those who live in the end times, this world, how do we have to respond to what's happening in the world? And how do we have to live our life? God's angels will appear in our life. Because it's a messenger angel, he will tell us a message, and in the spiritual realm, God's, um, he can open our perspective on God's, uh, what he wants. So the second thing, so after dreams, is vision. So vision, who had visions? So if you go to Acts chapter 10, a person called Cornelius appears. So let's go from Acts chapter 10, verse 1 to 5. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment. Italia. One who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, and when he observed, and when he observed him, he was afraid and said, "What is it, Lord?" So he said to him, "Your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God." 
Kim Kavat Yasmi, Jopa and send for Simon whose surname is Peter. Jopa ye boneyo Pedro ga hanen Simon el chongara. Da yogi do bomiyan. 고넬리란 사람에게 이방인이죠. 이탈리아 군대 백부장입니다. 그런데 이 사람이 하나님을 받아들여서 유대인들을 돕고 하나님께 헌신된 사람이에요. 그래서 많은 가난한 사람을 구제했고 기도를 정기적으로 해왔던 걸 보면 굉장히 희극실한 사람이었죠. 그 사람이 뭐라고 그래요? 네 기도와 구제가 나한테 상달됐기 때문에 내가 내 메신저인 데를 보낸다. 환상의 전사가 나타나서 말하는 것이죠. 그냥 어떤 확신을 본 것이 아니고 환상 중에 전사가 나타나서 정확한 이유와 네가 이렇게 했기 때문에 너에게 이런 일이 나타나서 너의 일을 해결해 줄 사람이 욕사에서 기다리고 있다라고 정확하게 하나님의 가이드라는 말을 하는 것이죠. 이런 삶이 여러분에게 나타나기를 예수님을 추원하는 것이에요. Uh, appear to you as well. So you didn't just mistake, you see something, he, when you see a vision, you clearly could see the angel of the Lord. So the angel's activity, how to join the angel's activity, there's a clue here. How can you receive angels into your life? Excuse me, yeah. 여러분의 삶은 하나님께 드리고 정기적인 기도와 부재의 삶을 살게 되면 하나님의 여러분 삶 안에 또 다른 구원의 영역 이분이 거기까지 깊이 생각을 못했을 거예요. 물론 이분의 신앙이 보면 자기 따르는 종들까지 하나님을 믿게 만들었던 사람이 있지만 삶 자체가 정말 신실한 사람이었을 거예요. 자기들이 정국자의 군대로 와서 이방인을 유대인들은 자기의 종을 빌리고 하시는데 그 사람들에 대해서 권위를 가지고 물리는 게 아니고 오히려 그들을 섬기고 그들이 믿는 하나님에 대해서 같이 섬겼다는 것은 굉장한 마음이 하나님께 합당하게 되었던 사람인 것이죠. 그러면 여러분도 하나님의 마지막 때 이런 커뮤니케이션 굉장히 익사익한 커뮤니케이션이죠. 이런 걸 봤을 때 여러분 삶 안에 놀라운 어떤 충격적인 인카운터가 여러분의 삶에 있었어요. 그래서 비전으로 딱한번본 천사는 마이디 워리어였어요. 마이디 워리어. 로마 군복장으로 팔짝 딱 끼고 말도 안 해요. 움직이라고 가만히 하고 있는 거예요. 잠깐 봤어요. 처음 봤던 환상이죠. 애니웨이. So these kind of things, it works together to fulfill God's purpose. So to Peter, at a different time, he showed him a different vision, and he made him wait, and then he makes everything come together. So that's why Cornelius, all his relatives, all those who are related, they called all of them, and then the author of the same kind of work happened there in his house as well. The same thing that happened in the upper room happened in Peter's house. All he did was proclaim, you know, Peter's message, but then, you know, the tongues came upon them, Holy Spirit came upon them. The same kind of thing happened. Don't you want to experience this kind of thing? So, his story was written in the same way. So, you are in charge of one part, as one, and you are a main character, you follow his lead, and don't you want to write the new history? I bless all you guys so that you can experience all of that. Because God is the people of those kind of people. It's not about us, not even asking him to send angels to you, but at the time when you need, all promises, things, the Lord wants us to know that everything he promised is real. In the end time, it's a set anointing, which is prophecy, dream, vision. Generation, in order to break everything that's wrong in this generation, this is the area. Because this world is focused on new age and everything else, they're going into idol worship. When they do those kind of things, they are going into idol worship. In order to change those lies and break those lies and into the truth, they are going into idol worship. In order to change those lies and break those lies into the truth, they are going into idol worship. In order to change those lies and break those lies into the truth, they are going into idol worship. In order to change those lies and break those lies into the truth, they are going into idol worship. In order to change those lies and break those lies into the truth, they are going into idol worship. In order to change those lies and break those lies into the truth, they are going into idol worship. In order to change those lies and break those lies into the truth, they are going into idol worship. In order to change those the Spirit's voice, when the Spirit speaks to you directly, so in Acts chapter 13 from verse 1 to 3, 
that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas Simeon was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manayan, who had been brought up with Herod, Tetrach, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Okay, so they, when they fasted and served him, it says ministry or serve or service or worship. So, when they talk to us, when it's when we all together meet, we gather with one heart, we worship, pray, and then we come to us, then the Holy Spirit will say something. So the Holy Spirit will speak to you. The Holy Spirit said, He will speak to you. Just like the Lord said, don't you want to say, like the Lord said, the Lord said, don't you want to say those words? Or the Holy Spirit said, don't you want to say that? In your life, don't you want to confidently say those words? The, those, the days where you'll say that will come soon, and that area has been opened there. So you just have to develop that area. So developing means you have to seek it. It's not just you sit there. Yeah, it's you have to give your life to him, just like Cornelius did. All these people as well gathered and they focused on what God wants to do. What, when they did what God wants them to do, then they could hear the Holy Spirit sit. It's in the sit, they could hear what the message is. They could hear the Holy Spirit sit. They could hear the voice sir. They could also hear in the inner voice. But they could also hear the audible voice. But it's the Holy Spirit's voice. You know, set them apart and then, as I told you, you know, prepare them and send them. So in order to release them into a new ministry, they, not only did they receive this revelation, they re you can receive this revelation, and when you are sent from that revelation, then you can have more confidence in your ministry. Do you understand? Like called, they're like, am I really called? The reason they are questioning this is because when they have this question is when they want to do what they want to do, when they want to do something else, you want to escape. So that's why you keep saying, am I really called? You, when you compromise. So in, that, in those times when you're questioning if you're really called, when the Holy Spirit says, I called you and I sent you, then you cannot deny it. Not just that, he also told us that as the Father sent me, I also sent you into this world. Jesus clearly said that. So this world, you have to hear this as a Remo word to you. It's not just, well, if you just hear it as Logos, then you won't respond to it. It won't impact you because you hear it only as Logos. But, Logos, but if you hear it as Remo, wouldn't God confirm his word with you again? In the ministry that you're going to, as you're going one step forward, one step at a time, God is always with you. And then you'll be a witness to these words. And then because he called you, he will give you um, confirmation that he called you to this. So he will intervene in your life a lot. So you have to, when you sense it and you respond, then your life will become more exciting. Many people, they say they're rejected, I'm, I'm not accepted, I'm lonely, you know, I'm not chosen. But when you go into the ministry world, when you go down ministry, then it'll be very lonely because a lot of, you got to do things that other people do not think about that they don't understand. They might think that you're weird, but... There's a certain message, then you shouldn't, you won't live a wavering life. When God gave Joseph a dream, not, not the father Joseph, the Jesus' father Joseph, but to Joseph, the other Joseph in the Old Testament, he gave him the revelation, and then what's going to happen in the land of Egypt, because of those dreams he gave Joseph, he was able to pass everything that was happening in Egypt. How do you think Joseph learned about like business, like economy and business? How do you, where did Joseph learn that? Where did he get trained from before that? So then where does he get the real training? He got it in the prison. In the prison, he learned about economy and administration. He did everything in the prison as a trainer. How to use it, how to not use it, he learned. So that's why you have to change the picture you have. 
만일 이방인이 와서 다른 나라에 와서 노예로 팔려고 와서 그런 걸 들어보면 누가 도와주고 있어요? 하나님의 방법은 남들이 모르는 상태 왜? 애니가 공격하지 못하도록 여러분이 이 피해를 이해하시나요? 그분을 신뢰할 때 그분이 그분을 내서 우리가 어떤 일을 결정하는 것이 쉬워지거든요. 우리의 생각이 분명하게 만들어주는 것이거든요. 그래서 모든 그러한 경제나 가시는 통치 방법을 배운 것이죠. 어떻게 하면 내가 그렇게 만들고 하나님이 정한 바운바리와 왜 이걸 해야 되는지 하지 말아야 되는지까지 정확하게 이해한 것이죠. But then one mistake made him stay in prison for two years more. But even in those two years, you just see learned that he had only trust in God. But all those treasures come to you. How you have to deal with all of that? Just like Joseph did, you have to receive training so that you can be released to you. Otherwise, when all those conclusions come to you, then people will start to be corrupt. 이런 부분들을 so 하나님으로부터 말씀으로 인도함 받을 때 word, 여러분 삶 안에 큰 능력과 힘이 될 거라고 생각해요. So 자, 또, 또 가볼까요? 누가 보면 2장 25절, 32절, 25절, 32절 So sometimes the Holy Spirit can speak to you by voice, but He might also give you some kind of insight or inspiration, some kind of spiritual like inspiration to you. Okay, 누가 보면 2장 25절, 30절, 10절에 대한 얘기죠. 가보세요. He was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord Jesus Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. Seeing your salvation which you have prepared before the face of all people, revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Okay, 여기 참 재미난 것이 있어요. 평상시에 하나님을 섬기고 하나님에 대해 했더니 So then the Holy Spirit came upon him. The Holy Spirit was upon him. And then revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. From the Holy Spirit, he received some kind of revelation, some kind of inspiration. He received it. And until you meet the Lord Christ Messiah, you're not going to die. To the very old city of the Christ Messiah, you're not going to die. To the very old city of the Christ Messiah. So, so, the temple to dedicate their children, but among those children, Simeon and Levi, they were the ones who were chosen to be 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 the ones who were chosen. God in his history, don't you want to be in one part of his history of the kingdom? God prepared for that. So you just have to look for it. In the book of life, all the recorded plans for you in the book of life, in your life, you understand and what and when and where, what do I have to do in order to know that thing will be given to you. Do you understand? 때때로 하나님은 말씀을 묵상할 때 이런 말씀을 많이 하세요. 제가 한국에 있을 때 아침에 말씀을 묵상할 때 하나님 음성 듣는 걸 좋아했는데 네가 오늘 어떤 사람을 만나리라. 어떤 사람을 만나리라. 내가 왜 만나야 되는지 어떻게 만나야 되는지를 말하지 않으세요. 그냥 그렇게 하고 한 종일 아무런 일이 없었어요. 저녁 때쯤 돼서 In the like the Anyang area, there was even a bookstore that was made. So he he liked going to like the like the centers because he liked to take the whole book, like all the books and read it. So he went to the bookstore and suddenly. So that sent their son to the U.S. for abroad, and then but he couldn't stand it there, so he 
back on her vacation. So in order to encourage their son to turn his team to the books, to pick up the books, but without any thought, because he read a lot of the books, he just recommended that, oh, this book is really good. And then suddenly that person was touched and invited to take two of their books. So someone he didn't know at all, he received an invitation and went. So what then he, he thought of how God told him that you're going to meet someone today. So that house is very rich. That was the first thing he went to an apartment that big. All the family scattered there. And then they were serving him dinner. And then they were asking him for a message. So it's all, he didn't know any of these people, but then what would he say to all these people? He said that in the morning, God told me this, that I didn't think I was going to even meet you guys today. So what he said again, he said, to this child, there was a special uh, plan from God for this child. So, you know, they're in the kingdom family, through one family member to another family member, they can challenge each other and influence each other. That is the kingdom way. You know, the body is all, the members of the body of Christ help each other. So then he said that to that family, they, kind of, they went, uh, they, like, um, they were very, I guess, happy. So then he did what he learned. He did as he was, he heard. So when you meditate, don't just read it. But through this word, what am I going to experience? Like, ask him to tell you, teach you that. So how you serve your heart's desiration has to be different. How what you want it has to be different. When there was some kind of issue, in order to solve that issue, God was sent the word. The, the word to break through the situation, to deal with the situation. So when, until that word comes to you, every time you meditate, you have to all in, go all in. Then suddenly the spirit at the right time will speak to you. Mission trip, you know, the main pastor said, I'm going to bring 200 people and told him to be delegated to Pastor Kim. You know, a lot of people didn't cooperate, there was a lot of issues, but then suddenly he remembered John 7, verse 28, where Jesus suddenly stood up and said, whoever is thirsty, come to me and drink. So when he spoke this, and he was reading it, suddenly the Spirit moved in him, saying, at the end of the holidays, you got to uh, proclaim this, decree this. You know, shout it out at the end of, you know, at the end of all the holidays. So he doesn't know when it's the end. I don't know. But then after he came back from the location, he trip at night. Palm. And so when he came when he came back at the Friday night, they had they had over, like a overnight service, nighttime service. But he was a missionary at that time, so there was a lot of pastors about him. So they all went together. And then there was the associate pastor that also went together. So the associate, they said the associate pastor had to give sermon. So when he finished his sermon, it passed over midnight. So when all the people were sleeping at that time, they were all sleeping. So at that time, he went up at the uh, at the end of the holiday. So as soon as he went over there, he said, the Lord said something about the Philippines. And then th this happened, this happened, this happened. Because they all experienced what happened. They know what happened. So the spirit, he experienced the spirit moving. So he tells you beforehand and that you know beforehand. And you know in advance how to, how to fulfill what you know the Spirit will lead you, and then you just keep following him. If in the middle he disobeyed and he missed the timing, then that wouldn't have been fulfilled. So the, the way God leads you is very interesting. You surrender to it so that at any time so you can hear God's revelation, insight, words, voice, then when you respond to him, and through that, God's kingdom's work, he wants you to experience everything. So that way, in your life, all your things will be changed. When we went to Indonesia, the rain that came when we were in Indonesia, and the Philippines rained and sea. But what I said was that the rain that came when we were in Indonesia, he was able to, you know, experience stopping the rain. It was a very amazing experience. You know, the ability to walk over the walk on water, he wants to experience that one day too, but don't recklessly try to just walk on water. You clearly need his word. So let's go to the next part. Another way God talks to you is He gives you the desire of your heart and it makes it be fulfilled. So let's go to Philippians 2, 13. 
For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Okay, amplify the Bible. It says the power and desire. and desire. Okay, energizing and you the power and desire. The power and desire. No, you are Okay? You want your own desire, but in order, you know, some kind of, you want to fulfill something in the kingdom. Even in this mission trip, his first thought of this mission trip was, how can we help Israel? Throughout his history, like his past experiences, the reformed Jews or the orthodox Jews, when he met them, those experiences, their attitudes, and so the self-curse issue, the self-curse issue. Another thing he learned was that through Paulus and other ministers, you can redeem history. You can reverse the timeline in the spirit. He wanted to do that. So when he did that, he was thinking, how can I do that? So the first thing that popped up into his was Auschwitz. Then it was Hungary. Then it was Hungary. That's how the process began. He, later on, through God's revelation, he figured out Czech Republic, but he had no idea about Austria. So just with a few clues, he started the mission trip process. But this, you can know that God is pleased with those works, but you also know that Satan doesn't like all the things that we're doing. So through the process of this mission trip, we can see how know that we're processing in the right way for this mission trip. That's why in Philippians 4, the what kind of hope did he give us? Regarding by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Okay, 여러분이 하나님이 주시는 생각인지 아닌지 알수 있는 방법은 피로가 앞에서 막 Even if they're mocking you and they're giving you a hard time in the front of you, you know, you'll still be at peace. 여러분도 이런 걸 경험해 보길 바래요. Theological seminary life would have attracted him. So the same criticism, the kind of people he realized if I left that person, then the seminary would just accept that and then those kind of people graduate, then that place itself would not be the destroyed. So he realized that if he left that person, then the seminary would just accept that and then that place itself would be destroyed. So he realized that if he left that he got a lot of hate. He felt a demonic, and he was in a hard time. And that person came to him to attack him. But then he got a huge reversal situation. So those, the person who was in the situation, he helped. God helped him deal with it. So there was a lot of people who attacked Pastor Kim during his time at the theological seminary. But they're from above. You know, God helped him. Helped his emotions, pointing fingers at him and cursing and swearing at him. But he was old. When he went to the seminary, he was in there on the other side. So even the most younger people, those who are five, six years younger than him, were mocking him. Because he was a leader. He was a leader. He was a leader. Technically, his senior because he went later, but they were like pointing figures and you know, but he was at peace and he was calmed down. So then they were surprised. So as we go to Romans 8, 6 to 8, there's a key issue here. Or to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. It's not working well. What can I do? It's not doing. It's not going well. How can I do? All those issues are usually related to your flesh. Your flesh desires. It's all related to that. So the way is very simple. 
방법은 간단해요. 예수와 함께 십자가에 못 박은 그녀를 찾아내요. 여러분의 중심까지 그 영역까지 Desire It'll work all those desires that came up will work as a network because it's not one or two days that happen, but in your life, in many areas, because you allowed a lot of things, that's why those desires are there. But if you trust in Him and that you believe in the work of the cross, then that work also be crucified and then with Jesus, and then you, when you agree and you seek out that kind of thing. Then the Holy Spirit will start to deal with your inner issues when you crucify yourself to the cross. He did this kind of ministry. You know that person fell over because the Spirit came, but he, made, he was able to feel the pain of being crucified to the cross in his two hands. There, that family life was very full with sexual desires, but then he was able to, that person started feeling the pain of like, being crucified to the cross. So then all of your, like, the desires in you, it'll start to, you know, be, it'll start to break away. So then in Romans, uh, it says about living sacrifice. So then you'll be able to discern God's way, God's will. So not being conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your body. Your, body, your thinking kind of changes. Your perspective changes. So it's like little kids, when they touch something yeah, hot, they're, they're, they're going to remove their, their hand because it's hot. Then something similar comes, that memory will make them not touch the hot thing anymore. So the same alarm system in your heart has to be recorded. The sensor has to be recorded. You have to ask God to record those things in your heart. So the start of that is from the living sacrifice. Living sacrifice is you have to give up your flesh. You have to give it up. To try to say, oh, I sh maybe I shouldn't do this. What if I don't do this? Will I be cursed? Is my face going to be defamed? No, don't worry about that. You're, if you're, you're doing it for God, have you ever been persecuted because of the Lord Jesus? 아니면 핍박 받은 일은 피해 다녔어요. In the Bible it says because of me and my name and for the God and the kingdom of the gospel you know, be, be reward for you in heaven. But this reward but then you also receive persecution with it. Persecution. But him after the theologian what you know the vision that he saw? He saw the you know Jesus with the crown of thorns and then you know Jesus being whipped and spitting at him. They were mocking him. He saw that kind of picture. So as soon as he saw that, he fell to see. Why? Because he was surrounded by people. Oh, this is, Jesus experienced it beforehand, and we experienced the same thing, and he touches our hearts with that, that the change starts to come. You know, different, interesting works will start happening. You know, before, he couldn't English that well, but then, he led, you know, meditation with those English people. No, English speaking people, so it's very interesting that day and night. So, you know, everything that God spoke to him in the day meditation, everything happened during school. And then when he responded based on what God told him in the morning, at the night when he did meditation again, you know, God explained those results to him. So, day and night meditation. There wasn't that, but, you know, there wasn't that much, but there was a great spiritual shaking in the school. To some kind of territory or area, think about how you're in to shake those territories. In Acts chapter 4, it says, those who get there, where they're gathered, that's a shake. 
where they receive persecution together and they pray together. And the Acts chapter 4, where they gathered, everything is shaking. You know, everything will be fulfilled to fullness. And then more people will share. And they will give, dedicate their life more to God. Those kind of works will start to happen. And then what after happened? What happened after that was chapter 5, where even where Peter just walked the shadow, those who touched his shadow, they were healed. By shaking the territory that you are in, there will be, if there will be spiritual change because of the shaking in your life, then would you give your life as a living sacrifice? That is a living sacrifice. You are living sacrifice. When you give yourself and you give it up, and this land will change, and it, because of me giving this up, and Gen Z will fully willingly do it. This kind of message, more specifically by God's truth, I hope it will be fulfilled in your life. So lastly, to surroundings in John 16 from 13 to 15 it says when the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truth since he surrounds things he will make it so that it will go that way in a certain way so that you will have no other choice have you ever experienced it that oh you don't have any other choice there's only one way left you tried to run away, you tried to go this way, that way, but God led you to a certain way, one way. You're until you're in that corner. If you get put into that corner, you'll be, have a really hard time. And when you move in his way, his plan, then in you, he, would he wants to change your inner man. Because unless your inner man changes, then the new like, the power or the thing you become, you cannot do it. Your life will be destroyed. You cannot handle it. So in the end times, God's power anointing and like fire, unless like God's fire appears, people change. Christine, showed me that the fire will come. But in order for the fire co to come, that everything in you has to burn away with the consuming fire. Everything in you has, the refiner's fire, the consuming fire has to come. In Malachi chapter 4, like the fire has to come. All of your bitter root and branch has to burn away. That kind of fire has to come. In order for that to happen, as a sacrifice so that the fire can come, Set onto the altar, given to the altar. When you choose until you take that one step, God is waiting. What are you saying? You're saying, is there no other way? Is there no other way? Then if you do then nothing will happen. So you have to keep dying with Jesus, then the resurrection power will come. Then there will be a new dimension, message to you. Then there will be a new level of work that will happen in your life. Do you agree? I pray that these words will happen, appear in your life. As the Bible, there's a in the Bible, there's a lot of areas where the word, the word comes out. So there's Rema, Logos. There's even a word called Dibar. There's a lot of different ways that the word is shown, but the, the word moving by the living voice, that Rema, when that Rema comes to you, that will change your life. To you is from the spirit and life means because, because when, you when you die because of that word, there will be the resurrection power that will appear in you. So everyone who's listening to this word, receive it in the end times so that your life is exciting and there will be supernatural power and his heart will be poured onto you that way through your life, very naturally, by faith, when you just speak by faith, there will be great signs, wonders, and miracles that will follow you. That kind of power and, um, will come upon you so that there will be great change and his glory will manifest in you. I bless you. Thank you.